Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over. Father, we also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every need, every wish, every dream, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for always answering them in perfect season. And also, Father, we have these prayers before you. We pray for all those hurting and suffering around the world, Father. There are so many. There's so much work that needs to be done in a short amount of time, Father. Strengthen us, Father. Guide us. Bring forth thy wisdom, Father, that we must possess by thy hand to deal with your children and with ourselves as well at times. We also pray, dear Lord, for Stacy, Heather, all our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, Taylor and Joshua, Barbara, Becca to pass her exam, Randy and Connie and their families, Jimmy Lee, Rachel. On all these, Father, we ask... Dear Lord, that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal. In Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. And as always, Father, we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, that you watch over them, and we pray, dear Lord, that they have not forsaken thy word, and that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And we pray for Israel and for our nation, for thy kingdom to come knowing that it will be thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders every day. They're on the front lines helping your children. And we pray for our military who are in arm's way or who are about to go into arm's way for their safety and speedy return home. And as always, Father, we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day Better said, those that do not take the opportunity this day. We pray, dear Lord, for them and that they will take this day to receive Jesus into their lives. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. <coughs> okay. Last week we started the uh, Song of Moses. And why is the Song of Moses so important? Well, we're going to be singing. You know, those that overcome. And we're going, we're going to go back there today. We're going to do the finish up, Lord willing, the complete Song of Moses today in Deuteronomy chapter 32. But you got to understand, this is, who's singing this? The ones that are singing this are the ones that overcome. Overcome what? Overcome the adversity of this world. Overcome the Antichrist. Even overcome ourselves. You know, I mean, how many times do we fail? That's the well, biggest obstacle of all. Well, it is at first, but once you learn that, and it is, it's doable. You know, see, a lot of people say, well, I'm a sin. There's one guy... Uh, Years ago, I haven't seen him in a lot of years now, and I used to see him every day at the, well, every every weekend at the flea market. <coughs> and basically, he just gave up. In other words, he believed in the Lord and all that, but he says, I'm such a sinner, I can never be saved. And no matter how much talking to this man, I couldn't get through he says, you don't understand. He says, I'm too big of a sinner. <laughs> you know, and, and of course I said the words, you mean you're putting God small? God's not capable? I mean, I I used every bit of ammunition the Lord gave me. But this guy, he just... And it's, it kind of reminded me of in, in God's Word where the sinner wouldn't even look up. You know, remember where the... Mm -hmm. uh, what was it, a Pharisee? or I can't remember who was there. It was saying, I, I'm glad I'm not like this man, and yeah. I tithe, and I, I give, and I, I do all this. Yeah. And um, and the other man wouldn't even look up. He says, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Huh? It was the Pharisee and the Sadducee. Was it Pharisee and Sadducee? Okay. I, I didn't remember. Pretty sure. I don't think so, but 
I'll give that to you until I find out otherwise. Because <laughs> you're usually right. But um, the fact of the matter is, I kind of, I kind of thought about that in talking with this man. But the thing is, he wasn't like that man because even the sinner was basically asking for forgiveness, you know, and not saying, "God, you can't do this. You can't heal me. You can't forgive me," you know. But I kind of feel that this is kind of where people's mindsets are today. In that um, they think that for whatever reason, the, the position that they're in, the condition that they're in, is because things are so bad and it can't get better. And it's like they give up. But what's good about this, this song is about overcoming. But, yes, it also tells us about the negatives that we went through in this world. So, let's pick it up where we left off in Deuteronomy 32, but verse 11. And let us complete this song today. Remember, God is very protective of his children, as in the apple of his eye, documented in verse 10. So, with wisdom from our Heavenly Father and the reading of his word, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, and it reads... As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. Now this is talk we're singing this about our father. Now now what this does, it gives us a picture. The stirring up of the nest, you gotta understand how eagles work. That a mother eagle, basically, when, when a, a, a young is about, I can't remember how old, about six or eight weeks, somewhere around there, it starts stirring up the nest to get the eagles, the baby eagles, to jump out of the nest. Because after all, they're up pretty high in most cases. And uh, so, of course, the, the baby goes out and automatically, by instinct, starts to fly. However... Its young wings aren't strong enough to soar and, and do the things that an eagle needs to do. But see, a, a mother eagle will hover over that baby as it's flat, you know, it's kind of flying but going down. But that mother eagle will be over that chick as it's going down. And then when it sees it's in distress, that mother eagle will fly under the chick. And that baby eagle will land on its wings, and the mother eagle will fly and soar with the baby. This is your representation of your father. This is your representation of your father, what he will do for you. What he does for us all the time. He allows us to go out there. He allows us to make the mistakes. He understands how the world works. After all, he created it, and he came here himself. So he knows very well all the temptations that we have. But he allows us to go out and make mistakes. But when push comes to shove, your father will lift you up. And he will carry you and take care of you. He's always promised that. And this is what he's doing to each and every one of us. That's why it breaks my heart when people seem to give up. Because really what they're telling me is that they're giving up on God. They're, they're believing that God does not have the strength and the power and the authority to make things right in their lives. But he's telling you right here, I'm there for you. And I care so much for you, you just like the apple of my eye. You know, I care for you that much. Verse 12. So the Lord alone did lead him. Who's him? We covered that last week. Jacob being all, all the tribes. And there was no strange God with him. And that's what happened in the beginning. Remember, when God chose his children, chose this this tribe chose this this nation there was no false gods you know and he told them didn't he he said part of the commandments don't have any other gods before me and he knew that and he also told them not to intermarry now that's not a prejudice thing why why didn't he want them strange, not to? Gods. strange gods would be brought into the family and he told them don't do this because this would happen and sure enough exactly they, they went against God, and they started doing these things, and what happened? These strange gods came in and started polluting them, you know, because, after all, they were following the, the, the law of the land, so to speak, at the time, instead of God. 
So he says, hey, at first, there was no strange gods. Verse 13, he made him ride high on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. That is basically meaning this is the very best that you can get wherever you're at. And, and this is what our Father gives us today. I tell you what, it's just so amazing the blessings that God brings forth to His children who love and follow Him. It's amazing. I don't know how many times Don and I, I mean almost on a daily basis saying, Lord, we don't deserve this. But you know what? He deems us worthy because of His love and His care and His, His, His mercy and His forgiveness. You know, we give credit where credit is due. All I have is because of Him. All I will ever have will be because of Him. And I give Him credit for everything that I have, especially my heart. And from, from this, the, the increase here from its original meaning means fruit of the land. And, and um, I mean, the, the bottom line is, do you, do you take the very best? You're told what to eat and what to drink. You know, like uh, this diabetes thing that, that I've been going through. Me and Donna's going back to the natural way of doing things, you know, like we should have been doing all along. You know, but even then, you got to be careful these days because even some of those natural things are polluted. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful. You know, but again, if you follow what your father gives you, then you'll be okay. Verse fourteen: butter of kine, that that's cattle. Butter of kine and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan. That's the the very best of bulls, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. Uh, the fat of kidneys of wheat is the very heart of the wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. This word pure means unmixed. Unmixed. Uh, fermentation of the grape cleanses and pushes away all that is unpure. That's why we use the fermented grape at Holy <laughs> Communion because the impurity has been removed from it. God, basically what this is saying, God fixed that for us. And it was done here on this planet. Remember, this is a song that we're singing. This is something that we realize and that we, we overcome and we participated in. This is all the good stuff, you know, for us. But in many cases, like I said earlier, today a lot of this stuff has become polluted. By God? No, by man and what he's doing. I mean, what is he doing in the fruit today? He's putting in that... Uh, GMO. Yeah. And to, to, why does he do it? Why does he say he does it? To grow more, mm -hmm. to make them bigger, to make, keep them riper longer, you know, all this stuff. But all that does, I mean, if you go buy organic, it doesn't look as pretty as your, I won't name it, brand store, but it doesn't look as nice as your main store produce section where everything's yellow or everything's orange. No, it, it's it's kind of a mixture and a, almost looks a little bit kind of rotten, but it's not, you know, if it's done well, it's picked dull. correctly. Huh? It's usually duller in color. Duller. Yeah. Thank you, yes. But that doesn't mean it's not good for you, you know, but we get so used to having what we think is... Well, I'm not going to buy that banana because it looks rotten. Well, no, it's not rotten. It's organic and it's better for you, you know. And they do taste better. It's like the organic potatoes Donna buys all the time. It tastes so much better than the cheaper potatoes that you can buy in a, in a bundle. Yeah. And that's another thing, buying organic today. you got to have a lot of money to, to buy healthy food. You know, that's why so... So many it's people. Not just, it's not just organic anymore. It's the conventional as well. Well, any, anything any. that's healthy that would be considered healthy for you, like your fruits and your vegetables, like that, those things are pricey. Like if you go in with like twenty bucks, you, you don't really come out with a whole lot of fruit and vegetables or whole grains for mm -hmm. that matter. The what's being pushed now is cheap, um, Quick and high fructose. 
high sodium, a lot of empty calorie food. Uh, so what can we do? You have to go back to basics. Well, yes, but how can you afford to do that? Well, <laughs> that in and of itself huh? is a question. Yeah. Put seeds in the ground and let God do it for you. Do mm. what? Grow put, your own. Put seeds in the ground and let God do it for you. Grow your own? Well, some of us not able don't. To. Some yeah. of us are not able to do that. You know, I've been wanting to, because uh, i got a big old patch of woods right over here, and supposedly, I've been talking about this for years, haven't I? About growing potatoes. Mm -hmm. Not in the ground, but under the leaves. Because they're supposed to be white potatoes and a lot purer and everything. But I haven't done it. I can't tell you why. I can say, well, I don't have the time. Well, I'm tired of hearing that one. So is God. You know. It may come to that, though. Well, but I'm quickly running out of time, ain't I? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just go to the local farmer. Who but let me tell you something. You I can't tell you about that part of it. I can't tell you about the other. When, when, when Don and I decided to do this, God increased our finances. When here's he, just, he just increased it out of the blue. I didn't get a raise, you know, but Donna, it turns out, Donna, she filed for Social Security. She's supposed to get X number of dollars. Chances are, the guy called and we had to talk to the guy, they might double it. Double it. So, God increases. You say, well, that wasn't God. That was Social Security. I'm buying that. If we need... Everything that we need, God has provided. I said need, not want. But everything we need, God provides for. He's always done that. So why can't He do that for everybody else? He can. But the thing is, there's something on our part we got to do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do what's right. And when we blow it, repent. It's not brain surgery. You say it's that simple? Absolutely that simple. But the thing is, there's one thing. You got to do it. Mm -hmm. And want to do it. See, that's the key. That's have where a lot of people in have faith in it. Going back to the faith. Mm -hmm. It always comes back to that. Well here, here's verse fifteen. This this is this coincides with what we're talking about. Verse 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat. Now, see, prior to this, everything's going good. All, all the living <laughs> high on the hog, so to speak. I hate using the term hog, but uh, every, everything's going well. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. What's the saying here? Jeshurun is a name for Israel. For Israel when, when everything's going great. You know, this, this, this thing says, and kicked, you know, it's like a, like a, a, a horse or a foal, that, a, a foal that's put in a, a stable for the winter and you let it out in the spring and it's just running and kicking and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. cause it's, well, this is kind of a picture Father wants to put for our people is that, you know, when everything's going good and everything's just, we, we need everything, we, we got everything that we need, we even got everything we want. Our blessings are just, our cups are running over. What do we have a tendency of doing? In general terms, talking about people, forsaking God. I mean, when, you know, when, when, you, when there's a lot of need, oh Lord, I need, oh Lord, I want, you know, and, and, and I'm not talking to all of us in general. I'm talking about the world in general. Human nature in general. Human nature. And the fact is, when, when, when they're in need, they're praying to God, they're, they're going to church, they're studying, they're worshiping, they're tithing, they're doing all these things. But then all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're being blessed, coming out the gate, just everything's great in their lives. But then they have a tendency of maybe not going to church as often. Not studying as often, not praying as often, and all these things, and then little by little they're sliding back, sliding back, sliding back to their old nature, and before you know it, 
all hell's breaking loose in their life. And they go, I don't understand why. Uh, well, you don't. I conversation with the guy I worked with that that very situation happened. And I asked him, I said, how much time do you give God? Well, I, he's active in his church in a group and goes once a week for meetings and goes to church on Sunday. I said, yeah, but is that it? You know, because how much time do you expect him to give you? Well, the thing is, that's exactly right, son, because the thing is, I would also add in that point, okay, you're giving to the church, but are you giving to God? Right. And a lot of people don't understand there's a difference. Because a lot of people are giving to an organization. They're giving to other people and thinking that's all that's required of them. And a perfect example is, is that when the stuff hits the fan, they don't know how to deal with it. Well, if you're doing what, think about this. If you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and the stuff hits the fan, you're supposed to be able to overcome every situation. That's what our fathers told us. Why? Just like the eagle. When we get down in that, you know, where we don't know what to do, he comes and carries us. He helps us. He leads us. He guides us. He directs us. But if we're not listening to him, it says here that they are, um, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Thou art grown thick. You know what that means? Thick between the ears. You know, they're not listening anymore. You know. And the fact is, if they're not listening, they're not following, they're not worshiping, not according to the church, but according to God, then they're not going to be able to overcome. Yes? Um might be worth noting too that that's what we're supposed to be doing with fellow Christians is when they come to those roadblocks or they feel they they just don't know what to do we're supposed to be there to encourage them to uplift them to Edif edify yeah. Yeah. <coughs> absolutely lead them back to like, but how can you do that if you're not there exactly say yeah. and our father has always granted us a, a wonderful opportunity of having someone to go to that that he has blessed and that they give him credit so that they can be used at those times you know that's so funny when I first began my fellowship with this with all of us I, I used to spend hours talking to Donna on the phone and it used to annoy me so bad. I would be paying her a compliment about something. And she said, it's all glory to God. It's all God. It's not me. And it used to annoy me because I didn't believe that when she... I mean, I knew it, but I, you know... And over the years now, I slowly but surely, I understand what she means. But, oh... <laughs> Because without that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. It's, it's <laughs> just like when Don and I came to understanding with the Lord. And we came to the understanding that God's first in everything, including one another. And at first that was kind of hard to, to grasp. <laughs> Because she she actually called, not God, but church, which was God, my mistress. Mm -hmm. Because I put that above her. But at that point, she hadn't come to the fullness of understanding. But by the grace of God, she completely understands that. She doesn't put me for Oh, she waits on me? Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> unbelievably how much she does for me. But the thing is, she doesn't put me first. She puts God first. Every morning, I, I thank her on a Sabbath morning. She's buzzing around like a little bee doing this and then the other. And I always thank her. I said, you know, thank you for your hard work. She says, it's for God. It's not for you. It's not for the church. It's for God. But I understand that. I say that every Sabbath morning. And she says the same thing. But I understand that. Well, you should say, well, you're welcome, but it's for God. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, too, another thing Rebecca was talking about where 
you go to someone to to discuss problems and stuff. If if I were dealing as the world dealt with problems, I couldn't give godly advice. I'd be telling people to, to beat people up and you know, kick them in the <laughs> shins. And well, you'd be you'd this. be with the world. Yeah, I'd be you know take them out. Get, you know, get when a person them. calls or talks to you. 99% of the time, what do they want? Do they want an answer, or do they want a cheerleader with where they're at? Well, either mm -hmm. they want a cheerleader or they just want someone to listen to. I don't mean cheerleader being happy. I'm yeah. talking about they want someone who jumps on their bandwagon mm -hmm. and agree with what whatever condition they're in. They want somebody with empathy. Empathy. But the thing is, you can have you can have mercy. But the thing is, if you're truly walking with the Lord, you know what happens to me? You know why nobody calls me? Because hardly anybody calls me anymore. Talk to Donna. Because she'll she'll listen more. Where I don't have that patience to listen anymore. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I set them straight. I'm telling you. I've done it. Have I done it to you? Yeah. You know. I, the thing is, you know, I'll I'll tell them like it is because the thing is, you're a cop to the chaser. I don't care well, what you're going through, mm -hmm. what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Did you talk to God? And what are you going to do? <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> and 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 I'll be perfectly honest with you. That's why they'll call Donna before they'll call me. <laughs> and 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 the thing is, they know that I am going to say, look, this is this is. This is what the Lord says, and don't give me no song and dance. You're going to have to follow this or not follow it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> you know, but people don't. They don't. They don't want to hear that. If I, yeah, I know, but. Yeah. But well, we've already know. talked about the yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. You need to but. add but dot dot dot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. That'd but. be on the yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I know, but, but. dot dot dot. <laughs> Verse 16. Maybe we just brought somebody on YouTube to uh, make out some t-shirts and make a million dollars. I want a piece of that, by the way. Send it in. <laughs> make sure it's a tie, though. Or a love offering. I'll take that as well. Just kidding. Just kidding. Verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. That's what they did. With abominations provoke they him to anger. <clears throat> Think about this. Our Father tells <clears throat> us, don't do this. Now, on everything, we, uh, everything we've been talking about today, God tells us, don't do this. Then we go and do it, and we go, oh, God. You know, I don't mean to mock them, but the thing is, our Father says, look, you're ticking me off. I told you don't do this. You go out and do it. Now you come to me whining about it. Well, I told you what would happen if you do this. See? And that's what he's talking about here. 17. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up. In other words, they divined just new things to do. Whom your fathers feared or reverenced not. It, it didn't happen this way long ago. <coughs> you know. But they turned from God and started doing their own things. Are they doing that today? They're doing the same thing today. Just just in different ways. Oh, we're, we're coming to church. And we're teaching our children. We got a Sunday school class. We got a woman in there teaching our Sunday school class. Well, she don't know, come here from Sikkim, does she? What we were talking about earlier, as far as she's biblically illiterate. You know, and the fact is, here's the ones teaching our children. Now, don't tell me, eventually she ain't, or already has taught about the apple in the Garden of Eden. Because that's where most Sunday schools go. But that's so biblically illiterate. Then they get into flyaway doctrine and singing all fly away and all this stuff and painting apples and, and uh, pictures in the Garden of Eden. And all this is a beautiful young sponge of a child being indoctrinated 
into religion. And we know where religion is governed by now. We've studied that in the four hidden dynasties. So, yes, beloved, people still do sacrifice. They sacrifice today by giving their time, by giving their tithes, and by giving their prayers to the little g. Who do I mean by the little g? Not the big g, God, but the little g, the Antichrist. The, oh, no, I'd never... I'd never do that to the Antichrist. You are if you're teaching people to fly to save their soul. Because basically you're telling them to worship the Antichrist when he gets here. It's as simple as that. Verse 18. Of the rock, notice the uppercase R on rock. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And hast forgotten God that formed thee. And this is what people do. You say, well, how can they forget about God? They forget about our Father's teachings. They turn. Now remember, this is after they had all the bounty, all the beauty, all the love, all the blessings. But they turn from that. You say, well, how in the world, why would they turn from that? People do it every day. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, it's because of self. Instead of being selfless, they become selfish. In other words, they, oh, I've got all these blessings, so that means I'm doing everything right. Well, it could be at that point. But let's not also forget who also can give what appears to be blessings, the Antichrist. And that's exactly what he's going to do when he gets here. He's going to bring out all kinds of bounty to people. Chicken in every pot and all this stuff. All you have to do is worship him. That's a different subject for a different time. Again, this is a song. Remember, this is a song that we're singing as we're transitioning from a flesh existence into a spiritual existence. This is basically a song of our knowledge of what happened in this world and what's happened in our cases in some cases. Say, it's a song that we're singing. A, a, a realization of what's happened in this world. That's what this is. Uh, 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. So what? Those causing his children or tempting them to turn away from God. Does this happen today? It happens every day things or someone keeping you from hearing God's word being taught things keeping people from helping the hungry helping the thirsty helping strangers helping the sick helping the naked spiritually speaking now within this verse God is saying I despise them and when God despises you you're in trouble friend there's going to have to be a whole lot of pain. And what I mean by that, meaning repenting and doing what's right for you to get in good graces with your Father again. Because He wants to trust you. But to trust you, He's got to see something from you. I mean, if you keep turning from Him and doing your own thing, how's He going to trust you? He won't. But He wants to trust you. He created you for His pleasure. He loves you. I mean, he created the millennium for us, did he not? You know, he created, he died for us. Let, let's begin there. You know, so yes, he takes a very personal interest in our lives, and he doesn't want to see us fail. And he's going to do whatever he can, short of making us. He gives us free will. But he's going to do everything he can to allow us to overcome this, this age. And, and, and to turn and love him once again. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. In other words, they want to walk that way? Fine. I'm going to let them. For they are a very forward or perverse generation. Children in whom is no faith. That's what we're talking about just earlier, right? Faith. Well, there's people with no faith. You can, you can go to them and talk till the, you're blue in the face. 
But if they have no faith to believe, they have no faith to believe in this word. Because if they don't believe in this word, what the, don't else they believe in? God. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. See? And the word tells us there's only going to be one God, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, one God and Father of all. Only one. But people don't have that faith. They just don't want to commit themselves. Why? I don't know. Because to me, it seems, well, I'd rather commit myself and have eternity than to just live the 80, 90, whatever years I have on this planet, which is just a drop in a bucket compared to eternity. But they don't want to do that. They just, they just don't want to let go of the stuff that they have because they're thick between the ears. Yes. Correction, you said Hebrews one one. It's not Hebrews one one. John one one. John one one. I'm sorry. Thank you for the correction. John one one. First, did I do twenty? Mm, you were on it. You were in it. No, you did it. Yes. No. Did it Twenty one. They have moved me to jealousy. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, their idols, their foolishness. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. Loami, not my people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And that foolish nation, of course, would be the Kenites. In Amos chapter 6, verse 14, is when God brought this to pass, meaning those hidden things that we have studied and learned from God's Word, such as the four hidden dynasties that we've covered, the Kenites that Satan controls, and is part of Satan's controversy. God here is going to move them to jealousy to the point that they're going to cry out and say, what happened? It's not supposed to be this way. I don't know what to do. Well, of course they don't know what to do. They're in darkness. Oh, I'm a Christian, though. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You may call yourself a Christian. People can call themselves anything they want to. There's a difference of calling yourself a Christian and being a Christian. Christ man, Christ woman of God. Christ child of God. In other words, you do what God tells you to do because you want to do it. Not because you have to do it. Because you truly know, and you know, I'm sure we've all tried and tested the method, what works and what doesn't work. Well, with God it works. Without God it doesn't work. Simple to us, but it's so difficult for the world. Hey, that's, I'll tell you what, that's pretty serious stuff. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Hey, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Some might say this is a volcano. No, it's not. God is our consuming fire which we have documented through 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. You guys got to go? Okay. That God will destroy the elements of this world, meaning what? All the negative parts of this world, all the evil, he will, he will destroy. Everything that is evil at that time will be destroyed. It's our Father's promise. And thank God for it. I mean, who wants to go through eternity with evil? I don't. Why not just keep the world going the way it is? Well, he's not going to. And that's for us. Thank him for it. Verse 23. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Hey, when Father corrects, he does it real good. Now, why is he doing this? Because that's what they want. You say, no, they don't. Yes, they do. They want to walk in the world. They want to be a part of the world. They want the world to, to be their ruler. 
Just like uh, Israel, when they said, well, we want a king. We don't want God as our king. We want a man king. And God says, look, if you do this, 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 and this is going to happen. But we want, a, we want a man king. Well, this is kind of what people are saying today. We want the world to rule over us. We want the system to, to take care of us. And God's saying, look, if you do this, 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 and this, and this is going to happen. Well, guess what's happening? This, 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 and this is what's happening to them. Then when the stuff hits the fan in their lives, they don't know what to do. That's because they're not listening to God anymore. 24. They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat. That's reshef. It means a fever. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. And of course, we have been studying and document that beast system. That's all this is in reference to in Revelation. That's why you sing the Song of Moses, to understand the workings of these nations in these end times, whereby you understand what is happening to our people. God allows it, and sometimes God sends it. But why would he send it? Because that's what they want. That's why he's sending it to them. He's only giving people what they want. You want to walk in the world? You want to behave part of the world? I'm going to give the world to you and the prince of it. But if you know about it, you're protected from it. You stay away from those things. Verse 25. The sword without and terror within shall destroy. In the Hebrew uh, uh, manuscripts it says, bereave both the young man and the virgin. The suckling or nursing baby also with the man of gray hairs. You know, I've seen some seven-year-old children. I, I, I'll, I'll put even Rachel up against any preacher that I know in the world of what she knows over them at her young age. I would. That know more about God's truth than some old ones. This, of course, coincides with our learnings in Revelation. Basically, no, no one evil escapes. No one. I remember John growing up in this church. I always used to sit just like Rachel over there, not saying a word, just sitting there, just listening. And for, for, for I don't know how long, a long time. But then all of a sudden, he started every once in a while, he'd say something. And man, I tell you what, it was profound of his knowledge of what he learned. See, so he absorbed it. And uh, that's what will lead him now if he turns, if he turns to the Lord and prays to him. I hope he does. Verse 26. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. That, that's Remember, we covered this before in the Lost Ten Tribes. Where are they today? God said he would scatter Adam's children and they would become as numerous as the sands of the sea and the stars of heaven. And they are. They are. They're all over this planet. The very children, and, and in most cases of the world, they don't know who they are anymore. They don't know where they came from. People check their ancestry. How far were you able to get back? 1860? Somewhere about 1860. It's not very far, is it? About 2,000 years. Now they got a thing now that you do the swabbing or whatever they do and they check your DNA and all this stuff of your ancestry. I don't know how accurate that is. Have you seen that on television? Yeah, where they got a commercial of a guy who uh, says, I, uh, all my life I've been German and I bought the, what do they call the German clothes? Huh? Lederhosen. Lederhosen and did the, the, the German jigs and all this stuff. And he says, and then I had my DNA tested through whatever it was. And uh, he says, I found out I'm Scottish. 
Phillips, and I traded him a leader hosen for kilt. kilt. <laughs> you know, but point being is that you know it's kind of comical. But the thing is, we really don't know our two thousand, three thousand year old ancestry. You know, not really. But does it matter? Well, not really if you're with God, because you're in the family of God. That's what's important. It doesn't matter from what section you came from, what tribe you came from. Now, I'm still thinking about the different patriarchs. You had um, 12 patriarchs. <clears throat> well, you got 12 uh, months. And I was wondering what month each patriarch was born in. It would be interesting to find out each one was born in a different month. And that <clears throat> if you could... If you could get your ancestry back to the tribe, you might find what actual tribe you came from. But it's just a hypothesis. I don't know. You know, I, I have no way of finding out at this point, other than checking my DNA. But then again, I don't know how accurate that is. You know, they could say I'm from Mars for all I know. <laughs> <coughs> Probably would, anyways. What verse am I on? Twenty-six. I think. Twenty-six. Yeah, you did I just did 26, oh, yeah. yeah. I would make the remembrance of them to cease um, among yeah, men. Yeah. I would scatter them. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high. And the Lord hath not done all this. In other words, it's talking about, in other words, God doesn't like it when people get so high and mighty of themselves thinking that they're the ones that did all this in their lives. Look what I've done. Look at my strength. Look what I accomplished. You know, instead of giving credit where credit is due. If without Father giving me this knowledge and wisdom and the strength to do it, I couldn't do it. Without Father giving me the strength to do what I'm doing right here, I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring out the stuff that I bring out because it is Father that brings it out through His Holy Spirit. Not what I write down on a piece of paper or, or even study. It's what He gives. Now, we need to study to show ourselves approved. We need to have knowledge. But the thing is, to bring it forth in a format where people can understand it, that's the Holy Spirit. Verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Where does all wisdom come from? God. So here is a nation void of God. Void of counsel. Void of understanding. I mean, if you, if you understand this and you look at what's taking place in our television sets today with Congress and uh, the presidency and the world leaders kind of makes sense don't it now why why are they doing what they're doing it's just it's like a bunch of little children you know, it's like a bunch of little children behaving badly towards one another except they're world rulers well that's the key thing world rulers they just follow our Father. 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, if they would just listen, that they would consider their latter end, if they would just think about what they're doing and how it affects them and our Father. It would make a difference. Because... If they don't, back in verse 22 is going to happen to them. 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock, uppercase R, had sold, sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. In other words, I have given them the power and the authority. If one person was to use it, they could chase a thousand of the enemy away. Or two people could chase ten thousand enemy away. Just by faith. By the power of God through them. 
Now think about if a person can do this, which they can if they're following God, <coughs> what in the world do you got anything to worry about? One person can move a nation. That's pretty powerful. Not that they wouldn't move it, but God in them. I mean, they would shake in their boots and run. Now here's where the rubber meets the road. Verse 31. For their rock, notice the lowercase r, for their rock is not our rock, uppercase r. We covered this a few weeks ago. Even our enemies themselves being judges. Our enemies are judges, meaning they show it by their works, meaning they judge themselves by their actions. Example, someone who worships beside you then, then departs God's house and you see them on the news being arrested for embezzlement or, or whatever. Or these preachers getting arrested for child molestation. They're supposed to be people of God. They're not. They just say they are. It's a big difference. Their God is not our God. Their rock is not our rock. Verse 32, for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of, of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Perversiveness instead of being pure as of righteousness. They are bitter, bitter people. I won't expound too much on this because we've already covered a couple weeks ago. 33, their wine is the poison of dragons. Who is the dragon? Satan. And the cruel venom of ass. Ass again meaning snakes. Another name for Satan. Why? Because they are the ass children. And who are the ass children? Kenites. Sons of Cain. How many people don't teach that today? They don't even know what a Kenite is. I didn't say Canaanite, but Kenite. Yeah. Verse 34. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? You, you can rest assured it is. It is sealed, but it is about to be cut loose. God's love and God's vengeance. Listen carefully. Verse 35. <clears throat> to me belongeth vengeance. And recompense. That's to God, not to us. Their foot shall slide in due time. They're, they'll pay for what they've done. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. There's much within this, and I want you to reap the fullness of it. There are many translators that have mistranslated this verse. And if you have a companion Bible, you're fortunate. This is locked in and correctly where it can be changed can't be changed by false teachers the Ginsburg translate this correctly from the manuscripts and this is what it says in the manuscripts it says is not this laid up in store with me sealed up in my treasuries for the day of vengeance and recompense for the time when their foot shall slip so that makes more sense to me you don't need to turn here but Unless you feel need to, I, I want to read one verse from Isaiah 61. 61 verse 2, I think, yes. 61. 61 verse 2. I'll read verse 1 and 2. This is, this is when your Lord, remember, he, he came into the synagogue and they asked him to, to read the word. And he picked up the scroll and he started to read. And this is what he read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, at this point, what he did, he closed up the scroll. And he didn't continue to read anymore. Why? Because the time for, for vengeance was not yet. So he didn't read the completion of that. 
because that would be a future event. Now this in theology is called the gap theory, which means that it's, it's a gap of time between at that moment when Christ came at his first advent to when he leaves and then comes back again. There's a gap there, a large gap of time. We don't know how long that is. We know that he's coming soon, but we don't know when. So that's what basically this is. You don't, and, and the bottom line here is, meaning this is what that verse returning, returning to Deuteronomy has to do with that gap, the time between Christ's first coming and second coming. Now why is that important? <clears throat> because a lot of people say, well, we're still waiting. We're still waiting. Well, Father said you would be waiting. It's going to take time. Now, I kind of believe what Murray says, but I, I, I don't know how to document it. And I, to my best of my knowledge, Murray's never docu documented it. That he believes that Christ isn't going to return until every soul that has been created by our Father has an opportunity to be born. True, and, Huh? Through women. Through women. Now, that also means, remember, there's millions of kids that have never been born. But they came through women mm -hmm. already. Yeah. But they were aborted. Right. So, uh, it could be. It could be that. I don't know. The Word doesn't tell us that. The Lord doesn't tell us when He's coming. But we, I, I, I kind of feel to be fair, and God is completely fair, that everyone would have to have an opportunity of being born. Because after all, the ones that are being held in chains now are those that refuse to be born, mm -hmm. that followed Satan. And uh, they chose not to, they didn't want to be born innocent. I, I was listening to Murray last night, and um, of course it was an old, old show, but uh, one of the letters uh, uh, one person wrote in is um, basically, well, why? I guess I'm not supposed to talk about it because he just took it out of my mind. <laughs> All right, Lord. Continue. Verse 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants. When he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. This is when the correction has been completed. Christ will have a change of heart for those who once forsook him, but repent and return to him. But for those that don't, verse 37, and he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Where, where is... Where is all these things that they trusted in? Let them help them. Say. 38. Which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. In other words, you trusted on the world to take care of you. You trusted on the government to take care of you. Let them take care of you. You say, well, what kind of loving God is that? He's just giving them what they want. He's telling them, look, you, this is what you trusted in all your life. This is what you believe in. Well, let them help you. 39. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God with me. That's, this is when he comes. Remember, this is a song that we're singing of all the overcoming that had happened. Even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. When God has you under his protection, there is not a thing in this world that can pull you from him. He ain't going to let you go. Because you don't want to be let go. See, that's the key. You want to be with him. You want to be a part of him. You, you want him to be a part of you. You, you want to be so together. And our Father said, look, if, if you trust me like that, nobody's going to remove you. Nobody. 40. 
For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. And he does. Do you want to live with him? That's the key. 41. If I wet or sharpen my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. Meaning, if I sharpen it up real good, they're going to get what's coming to them. That's what he's talking about. God is very patient. Thank God he is. But he doesn't mess around either. When it comes to this, when it comes to his vengeance is released, God help him. He's not one's going to escape. But notice something very important here. It's also reward day. It's a time for God's elect to be rewarded. At the same time, all those that turn from him and start worshiping a false god are going to get what's coming to them. No, you got bleeding hearts out there. Oh, God wouldn't do such a thing. That's what his word says. God, God's ticked off. Why shouldn't he be? They killed him. Think about it. Crucify him. That's what they scream. And he shouldn't get vengeance? Of course he is. And people are crucifying him every day today. All over again. All over again. Because of the way they're behaving. Some hate him. Hate him. Hate God. And he's supposed to say, oh, come here, child, you don't mean that. Well, see, this is what's happening in the world today with so many parents. When a child so misbehaves and turns for them and keeps going back and going back and going back and screwing them over, left and right, over and over and over again, they keep taking it back, guess what happens? The child has no discipline hasn't been taught to do what's right. So what do they grow up to be? Misbehaving. Now, I'm not saying you can make someone love God. You can't do it. And God doesn't want you to do it. But the thing is, you need to teach them the ways of the Lord. And we all have. To the best of our ability with all our kids. But there's a point where it's up to them to accept or reject. And some of them reject. <coughs> we don't understand why in some cases. We just don't understand why. But they have. I'm running out of time. I've only got two more verses. 42. I will make my arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revengers upon the enemy. Meaning he's going to begin at the very head of the pulpit and work down. Through the ranks. Those that lead those astray he will start with first. You understand now why we're singing this song? Because this is showing all that we went through. All that we learned in, in our lifetime. All that we were... And you know what? We're going to have full recall at this point too because we're in spiritual bodies. So this might even... We might even be singing all the things that happened in the first earth age as well. All the things that we overcame. You know. But we're also singing about the negatives that happened. Because after all, it did happen. We're not sweeping it under a rug. There were times that we failed. But we repented. Verse 43 to complete the Song of Moses. 43. Rejoice, O ye nations. That's ethnos, eth even ethnic peoples. With his people were now Israelite. For after all, we're one big family at that point. For he will avenge the blood of his servants. And will render vengeance to his adversaries. And will be merciful unto his land and to his people. See, God loves his land. He created it. But he also loves his people. That's why he made an everlasting covenant with his people, which you're a part of. If you have eyes to see and ears to hear. So, there you have it. The Song of Moses. 
the song that we will be singing. And what a time it's going to be when we do it. Any questions? Like I said, next week we will uh, take a uh, uh, off time from the book of Revelation and we will be having Holy Communion and honor our Lord of His birth and uh, be prepared for September 23rd. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, go back in our lectures here a month or so ago and look it up. Um, it's an important time. We're also going to be honoring the Feast of Tabernacles, which on the lunar calendar isn't until October 5th for a week, but uh, we're going to honor it on the day that it should be honored. So let us pray. Do you have, yes, I'm sorry, you got a question? In the beginning of lecture, we were talking about the, the humbleness of praying, the fact that it was a, a, a Pharisee and a Pharisee, it was a Pharisee and a publican. Thank you. I didn't tax think it was. Yeah. This is a tax collector. Legalist and a tax collector. Yeah. Thank you for that correction. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for your word that is upon our hearts and our minds. We thank you for the beautiful song that you put on our hearts. A song of overcoming. A song that we will all be singing, those that serve you. And Father, we so choose to do that. And we thank you that we are not worthy, but we are deemed worthy by thy hand. And we thank you for that opportunity. I pray for everyone here today and their families and all those on YouTube and their families that you watch over us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.